A sixth myth about innovation is that your past experience determines your future outcomes. And this can go two ways. It can say that because you were innovative in the past, you will be innovative in the future. Or it can say, because you have not been innovative in the past, you cannot be innovative in the future. Both of those are wrong. What determines your future are your choices right now. And the fact that you have or haven't been innovative in the past doesn't actually make as much bearing as what you choose to do right now. You could make choices along the way that make it easier to become entrepreneurial, but it doesn't mean that you can't start doing entrepreneurial things today. As the old saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But the second best plant time, but the second best time to plant a tree is today. A seventh myth about innovation is that some people are born with it and some people aren't. That it's not something that can be, the innovation is not something that can be taught. It's something that is just innate, like your ability to play basketball. Well, if it's like your ability to play basketball, then we have some really demonstrable evidence that that's not 100% innate. Now, there are some differences between people who are born and they end up a lot taller than people who are born and end up short. And it's more likely that you'll become a professional basketball player if you're tall. But none of that matters if you don't try. So innovative thinking is something that can be learned. And some people may have an easier go at it at first. But the more you try it, the better you'll become at it. An eighth myth is that you have to set your emotions aside to be innovative. That it's something that's cold and calculating and devoid of feeling. That myth comes out of the idea that innovation comes from big, soulless companies. Companies that you can't can't really connect to. Does anyone have a personal connection with uh, Cisco Systems or Sun Microsystems? Not really, but your innovation doesn't have to be a big corporate change. It can be something that you do to solve a problem that you face. In fact, the best innovations are ones that build on your personal experience and either solve a problem that you are facing or make something that you're doing even better. A ninth myth is that the environment in which you find yourself makes all the difference. A lot of companies have spent a lot of money to build fancy campuses like the Google campus to encourage innovation. But actually, if you look at what Google has done, they say it's not to encourage innovation, but just to encourage creativity and collaboration, which do help contribute to innovation. You can innovate anywhere. You don't have to be surrounded by tools or in a library. You can be in a, in a field, in your home, in your car, or oftentimes in your shower. And there's some really great research about why being in your shower helps come up with those brilliant flashes of innovation. Because it's a time when your mind has the freedom to kind of wander, and that's when you can kind of discover something that your mind may have already found, but it's just sort of bringing it up to your attention. And a final myth, which is one of those great classics within the discussion of innovation, is that innovations are entirely new to the world ideas. And that's just, it's not true and nor should it be true. Some of the best innovations take something that's a well-known practice in one field or one location and bring them to another. And that cross-pollination can create really outstanding outcomes. For example, the father of modern management, Frederick Winslow Taylor, spent his career focused on how to improve processes within steel mills to make the production of steel faster. And then he was asked to come out as a consultant to a paper mill. He was asked to come out and help them improve their process. The process for making steel and the process for making paper are very different. 
But what Taylor was able to do was apply the framework that he had developed in the steel mill to the paper mill and reduce the amount of time it took to make paper by 200%, which is just incredible. If you think about then how that can free those other folks up to do other productive tasks. So some of the best innovations are not coming coming up with completely new to the world ideas, but taking ideas from one place and applying them in a unique way to something else. Now that we've talked about some myths in innovation, let's talk about some ways to unleash the innovation within you.